Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for having me here today. Something has been on my mind lately. And you too? What comes to mind when you see Orange Shirt Day? Any thoughts? Do you know who Phyllis Webstad is? She is the First Nations woman that founded Orange Shirt Day. Let me give you a bit of history about Phyllis and Orange Shirt Day and how it all started. So many years ago, when Phyllis was a little girl, just before entering school, her grandmother sewed her a beautiful, special dress. And that's right, I said dress, not a shirt. It was made of orange fabric. Phyllis was very excited, but she had to be patient while her grandmother finished sewing her dress. Phyllis imagined how wonderful it would be to show everyone her new dress on her first day of school. Phyllis put on her orange dress with a big smile on her face. It was beautiful. Orange is Phyllis's favorite color. She couldn't wait to get to school and be proud to show everyone her new dress that her grandmother made her. She was so excited. This was not a regular mainstream school. This was an Indian residential school. When Phyllis arrived on her first day, she noticed the other children all lined up in a row and wearing white. She thought that was strange until three nuns approached her. And looking down at her, one of the nuns said, come with us. So Phyllis followed behind, wondering what was happening. The three nuns brought her into a room, tore her dress that her grandmother made off of her and destroyed it along with chopping her hair. Phyllis was in shock, and she had no idea what was happening. Everything that she owned, her clothes and all, was taken from her. This impacted Phyllis immensely. Years and years later, Phyllis was thinking about how she could commemorate her favorite colored orange dress, but thought, hmm, how can I do that? Then she came up with Orange Shirt Day, and that's how it was established. And Orange Shirt Day is now known as the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation on September 30th. This day is for Canadians to acknowledge the impact, spread awareness, and to reflect on the history of all Indigenous peoples across Canada. Now, September 30th, the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation is a very important day. And I will explain more about that day in another video shortly. I'm looking forward to sharing more with you about that.
Now I would like to talk about the term intergenerational trauma and how it applies and impacts Indigenous people across Canada. Now you see this photo here? It's a painting and it holds a heavy reality. The artist who painted this is Kent Monkman. This painting is worth a thousand words. The first time I saw this painting was in my sister's house. And I had no words. I was so shocked. There were three paintings all on skateboard decks hung up. And I asked my sister, what are these? And I went in for a closer look. And that's when it hit me. Intergenerational trauma is very real and is in all of us deaf, hard of hearing and deaf blind indigenous folks across Canada, including general indigenous peoples. And there are so many of us. The painting depicts nuns, priests, and the RCMP officers outside of an indigenous house, ripping children out of the arms of their parents and grandparents and taking them away from their homes. These innocent children didn't understand what's going on. My heart hurts when I see this painting and will stick with me forever. Well, the reason I'm showing you all this painting will be more clear as I show the next photo. In this next photo, I will talk about the history and correlation of oppression to Indigenous people and deaf and hard of hearing people. Are you aware of the banning of the use of sign language in all schools back in 1880 in Milan, Italy? That was implemented immediately and deaf children were forced into speech therapy and lip reading, all while their hands were tied behind their backs. They were forbidden to use any sign language and that law continued on for a hundred years and was reviewed back in 1980. Back in 2010, the ICED, the International Congress on Deaf Education, issued its first apology in Vancouver, BC, Canada. This is just one example of hearing oppression towards deaf people. ASL was disregarded among other sign languages around the world. The decision of speech therapy was manifested for deaf education, ultimately oppressing deaf folks. Just like the painting shows, educators are shooting down ASL. And this equates to Indigenous children being taken away from their families. So on that note, and how these two relate to each other, I would like to highlight three parts on how these two forms of oppression relate to each other. First one is identity. Second is culture. And third is language. A spoken language or a signed language. All three of those were stripped from us all of them. Now going back to that ASL painting being shot down, the artist's name 
is Mary Thornley. She depicts the disregard of the use of ASL after the Milan Conference back in 1880. In my next video, I will explain how this is related to the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation and the importance of that day. So now in closing, thank you all for tuning in. And hopefully I gave you all some thought on how you can support us. Orange Shirt Day doesn't only have to be worn on September 30th. It can be worn any day. And it shows your commitment to ongoing learning about Indigenous history here in Canada. Because we still need to support the Indigenous folks and the deaf Indigenous folks that are still with us today. And their families too. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.